We have been looking into the uh, book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah has only three chapters, but it is a wonderful book. Zephaniah means God has hidden. What he has hidden, we will try to uh, understand that. God has hidden. God has hidden the bright future for the people of Israel. For the people of God. The people of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, they are very, very precious in the sight of God. They are the apple of God's eye. If you are a child of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you are the apple of God's eye. What a wonderful thing it is. See, God has created our eyes in such a protective way. Anything that comes against your eye, immediately the eye closes. In such a way, God has protected. That means God has protected His children, washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, in a wonderful, wonderful way. They are safe and secure in the hands of the Lord. Nothing shall pluck them out of my hands. That's what Jesus said. See, if you are in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing shall, no, uh, no pestilence or no problem or no, uh, and nothing, nothing, even sword cannot touch you. Because you are safe and secure in the hands of the Lord. The children of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, they are the VVIPs, I have said many times. Very, very important people. God has charged His angels to protect His children washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. See, if at all God opens our spiritual eye, we will see the mighty angels protecting his children, washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So that is hidden. The meaning of Zephaniah is God has hidden. What a wonderful privilege is there for the children of God. It is so wonderful. It is so beautiful. Hmm? So we should rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ always. Whatever the circumstances may be, in this world we have tribulation. Yes, Jesus only said. But be of good courage. I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus said. I have overcome the world of all the problems. And God is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? See, that is the thing that is hidden. In the book of Zephaniah, Zephaniah means God has hidden. Hidden what? What is the bright future God, uh, God's people have? The people of God washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ is a very, very precious in the sight of God. As I told you, they are the apple of God's eye. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing. How much we should praise Him. Eh? Whatever the circumstances may be, whatever the difficulties may be, whatever the sickness may be, whatever the problem may be, eh? because in this world we have tribulation. The devil is after eh? his people because the eh? devil wants to disturb his God's people. And devil wants to bring catastrophe in the life of uh, the people of God. Devil wants sickness to come in the life of Jesus, life of the people of God. We have seen in the Bible. Yeah? Look at Job. Job was a man of God. He was a wealthy man. And he was, uh, he was very, very, eh? very, 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 very attached to the Lord Jesus Christ. Very, very. 
because he he wanted he was doing all thing good for the glory of god you know the story one day devil came in the presence of god and god knew the heart of the devil and he asked the question have you considered from where you have come he said i have ro i was roaming about the world and i have come here and god asked him have you considered my servant job <laughs> then what the devil says <laughs> you have given him everything there is nothing lacking nothing lacking so it is natural for him to be to be faithful to you remove from him and he will surely surely curse you on your face that's what that the devil says devil has nothing but huh, but destruction because he is doomed for the destruction that's why he wants the people of god to be destroyed and god gave him permission whatever god has given the permission to that extent only he can go the devil can go okay take all the things he took all the things all his wealth and everything and he he lost his health also job lost his health and even his wife came and told him curse god and die but job rebuked his wife saying that do we ha do we only should we only receive receive good from god should we not get the bad things from god he did not curse god at all what a wonderful man of god a rich man he lost everything he lost his riches but his integrity in god was intact see one thing if you are a child of god washed by the precious blood of jesus christ i'll tell you on the authority of the word of god whatever that comes in your life whatever that uh, happens in your life nothing shall destroy you and it happens for your own good god can do that he has proved it time and again look at that this was hidden in zephaniah look at that but it was revealed to him now yeah. what a wonderful thing it is yeah. see one thing we will hear in chapter 3 having talked about the destruction having talked about the problems in chapter 1 and 2 in chapter 3 zephaniah had the vision of the salvation of jerusalem what a wonderful thing what a wonderful thing and he says here woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city she obeyed not the voice she received not correction she trusted not in the lord and she drew not near to the her god her princes within her are roaring lions her judges are evening wolves they know not the bones till the morrow hmm. her prophets are light and treacherous person her priests have polluted the sanctuary look at that what they have done they have done violence to the law the just lord is in the midst thereof the lord came to the rescue of his people what a wonderful thing yeah. is what a wonderful <laughs> see that is the see god our god is a god, great big wonderful god he is almighty god 
He is the creator of the whole universe. I have been repeating, repeatedly telling that he has chosen his people before the foundations of the earth. That's what we read in the Bible. God has chosen us before the foundations of the earth and the fullness of time God called us. And when we responded to him, uh, we have been we have been received by the Lord Jesus Christ with a stretched out hand. He embraced us to himself. And God, I tell you on the authority of the word of God, God is very, very proud of his children washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God can go to any extent to protect his children. That he has proved in the Bible. God protected Moses. <laughs> God protected his people. Throughout the Bible we really see that. And the Lord Jesus Christ has promised, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What a wonderful thing it is. The promise is there. See, I have been telling you to uh, read Psalm 91 again and again and again. The emphasis of Psalm 91 is so wonderful. So wonderful. Hmm? I will read again one verse. Look at that. Verse 3 of Psalm 91. See the language. Listen to the look at the language there. I'm reading one King James version. Uh, verse three. Surely, surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Look at that. You read the only sixteen verses are there. Hmm? Surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. God can go to any extent that he proved in the history to save his children. Hmm? See, look at that. How does the, huh? How does the uh, Psalm ends, 91, Psalm 91 ends? With long share. Uh, I will read one verse 15. 15 and 16. He shall call upon me who shall call upon me? The children of God call upon him. And I will answer him. Look at that. Call unto me. I will answer you. That is the promise. Hmm? So I will answer him. In the positive things. Look at that. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And then I will be with him in trouble. Look at that. God was with the people of God whenever they were in trouble. Daniel was in lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were uh, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, their Hebrew name. They were in the fiery furnace. They were put in the fiery furnace. But the fourth man, Nebuchadnezzar sees the fourth man. He was just like the son of God. God was with them. He was surprised. The king, emperor, Nebuchadnezzar was surprised. He was totally taken aback. Have we not put three people? I can. I now see the fourth man. He just. He is like the son of God. God was with them. What a wonderful savior. He will never ever leave us. Whatever the circumstances may be, whatever the troubles may be, whatever the difficulties may be, whatever the sickness may be, the Lord Jesus Christ will never ever leave his people. That is the guarantee of Psalm 91. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a wonderful thing.
my dear friends have you ever understood the salvation what is the meaning of salvation hmm. salvation see salvation means deliverance number one from sin because all have sinned and come short of the glory of god if anybody is in christ jesus he is a new creation all things have passed away all things have become new salvation happens in your soul that deliverance when you come to the lord jesus christ with a repentant heart and asking his forgiveness the lord will forgive you so good our lord is he will forgive you see i have told several times that the thief on the cross there were two thieves on the cross of calvary the lord jesus was hanging in the middle of the cross and uh, one thief said to the lord jesus christ if you are the son of god save yourselves and save us then the other thief he rebuked that person do you not fear god we are we are worthy to receive this punishment but this man the lord jesus he has done nothing having said that he turned to the lord jesus christ and said remember me lord when you come to your kingdom the lord jesus christ was almost dying on the cross of calvary yeah. and this thief pray to the lord remember me when thou comest in your kingdom look at that but what was the answer of the lord jesus christ the dying savior immediately he opened his mouth and said this very hour this very hour you will be with me in paradise not when thou comest in the wind see he asked to remember him when he come coming back in his kingdom but jesus said this very hour you will be with me in paradise what a what a love it is jesus loves very much that's what the bible says god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that is the greatest love hmm? he will never ever forget who forsake us there are so many verses in the bible we read like this can a mother forget her sucking ch child she may forget but i will never ever forget you i will never ever forsake you that's our lord jesus christ he is the loving savior you will not find any other savior like the lord jesus christ what a wonderful savior mm. he is always willing to forgive us always always how much we should love him how much we should adore him how much we should uh, uh, glorify him see that chapter 3 of zephaniah says jerusalem will be saved what a wonderful thing it is jerusalem will be saved what what jerusalem did she did not obey the voice of god no and she did not receive correction she trusted not in the lord she drew not near to god, her god huh? 
That's what Jerusalem did. Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They know not the bones till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Look at that. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. Hmm. They have done violence to the law. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. Look at that. Even though he was in the midst, he will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not. The Lord failed not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations, God says. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, that there is none inhabited. What a wonderful God we have. Yeah. Even though they rose early and corrupted all their doings, God had compassion on them. Look at that, he says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon that and mine indignation, even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. God will punish the people who are going against the principles of God. Look at that. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one concept. In spite of God's anger, he does, he does not take joy in punishing the people. Rather, he takes joy to gather those people to himself. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful God we have. Let us examine our own hearts. See, we are human beings. Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is true about me, true about you also. But how much love he has shown to me. That is the greatest thing. If God has punished, where would I have been? But God did not take joy in punishing people. He is the loving God. That is the meaning of God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. The word, we cannot comprehend it. I cannot comprehend it, even though I have read it many times. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The meaning of the two-letter word, so, we cannot comprehend. I cannot comprehend it. I have been trying to understand that word so. How much you have loved me? I can only understand how much he has loved me. He has loved me this much. His two arms were stretched to the maximum extent and nailed to the cross. That much he has loved me. That 
that love we cannot comprehend it at all how much we should praise him how much we should adore him how much we should magnify him my lord jesus christ he is my everything there is a english chorus which goes like this he is my everything he is my all that should be our determination the lord jesus christ is my everything and he is my all he is my greatest property he is my greatest joy and what we should do we should present a grateful heart to the lord jesus christ and that will bring joy to the heart of the lord that is the meaning of worship many many people do not know what is worship worship is giving it is not re- uh, begging it is not receiving worship is giving why we should worship god Uh, we should worship god for what he is the lord jesus christ is the great big wonderful god he has created everything and the bible says nothing was created without him everything was created uh, for uh, everything was created for him we are his property man is the crown of creation you know that god created everything beautifully and he created man to be the owner the crown of creation but man failed miserably miserably but god so loved the world and he emptied the entire treasury of heaven in order to save you and me what a wonderful god i am see always think that i am indebted to the my savior the lord jesus christ my whole life belongs to him because he is the reason for my existence he is the reason for my my praises he is the reason for my uh, for me to follow him according to the word of god what about him he is the reason for my joy he is the reason when i am disturbed for my peace the peace that passes the whole understanding rules my life that is none other than the lord jesus christ how much we should praise him how much we should worship him eh? and he says here for then will i turn to the people a pure language verse 9 that they may eh, all call upon the name of the lord to serve him with one consent Yes. If we do it willingly and joyfully, that is good. Otherwise, the Bible says, "Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord." To that extent, we will not. Go. We should not go. Okay. Yeah. We, with all our heart. with complete willingness in our heart we should confess that lord jesus christ is my lord and savior he is my god and we should we should kneel down willingly joyfully in the presence of god confessing that the lord jesus christ is my lord and savior and god what a wonderful thing it is yeah. and say that they may all call upon the name of the lord to serve him with one consent look at that this is beautiful beautiful 
from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughters of my dispersed, shall bring my offering. Look at that. In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings wherein thou hast transgressed against me. Because uh, he will take away my transgression. For then I will take away out of the mist. This is very, very beautiful. Mist of thee. Them that rejoice in thy pride and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. Look at that. A new nature. If anybody is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. That was hidden. And God reveals that through Zephaniah. What a wonderful thing it is. <laughs> and look at that. This is very beautiful. Verse 12 of chapter 3. I will also live in the midst of thee and an afflicted and poor people and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Afflicted and poor people, they shall trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is highly, highly established. One who call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. Look at that beautiful. This was hidden and the people of Israel were lying and they were doing iniquity. But God says the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. Look at that. Shall. What a wonderful thing it is. Eh? God's word says, Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies. Neither shall deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Look at that. The deceitful tongue will be taken away. For they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. Nobody can touch them. See, what a wonderful thing it is. Nobody can touch them. No disease can touch them. No trouble can inflict them. Because in their mouth there comes the praises to the living God. What a wonderful thing it is. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. What a wonderful thing. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Look at that. What kind of a nation was that? Israel. We shall include ourselves. Wretched nation. Unworthy nation. Lying nations. Wicked people like us. God has forgiven us because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which was shed abroad on the cross of Calvary. The holy blood was shed for your sins and my sins. That cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And there comes joy, there comes, O oh, shout Israel, be glad and rejoice with all heart, O daughters of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments, look at that. What a wonderful thing it is. It's all in past tense. The Lord hath taken away the judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord. He is in the midst of thee now. Thou shalt not see evil. Listen to me very carefully. This is very beautiful. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing it is. 
Nothing shall touch you. That is the guarantee of Psalm 91. That's why I said repeatedly, you constantly you read this in Psalm 91. Beautiful. Very beautiful. And in that day, look at that, verse 16 of Zephaniah chapter 3. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. Look at that. Fear not thou. Look at that. <laughs> in the book of Isaiah, God says repeatedly, Fear not, fear not, fear not. And he gives three things. The triplet blessings. For the reason that you should not fear not. Look at that. And then he says, eh, This is beautiful. Okay. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thine hand be slack. Why? Verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Who is my God? Who is my God? He is Almighty. Almighty God. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hmm. Nothing shall come near His people because the mighty God has covered His people under His wings. What a wonderful thing it is. Look at that. And he will rejoice over thee with joy. Look at that. The, he, he means the Lord God. Lord God will rejoice over thee, over you, with joy. Look at that. In other words, the Lord joy rejoices. The Lord God rejoices in you. Look at that. Lord God rejoices in his children washed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. Hmm? He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Look at that. God is singing because of you. Is that beautiful? Have you ever thought about it? That's what the Bible says. The what was hidden. I told you the meaning of Ze uh, Zephaniah is God has hidden. What was hidden? Uh, he is revealing it now one by one. See, look at that. Hmm? He will joy over thee with singing. God is singing with joy because of you. Look at that. I will gather them that are uh, sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom re the reproach of it was a burden. He will wipe away the tears of his people. That is a beautiful experience. One day we will experience that in our, uh, in our Christian life many times. There are problems, difficulties, brickbats, and hatredness, so many other things we, have, we must have experienced. I have experienced a lot of that. I shed tears many times, but I experienced the hand of the Lord wiping away my tears. That is the work of the Lord God. In a very wonderful way, he wipes away the tears of his children. That is a very, very comforting, comforting experience. The Lord is a great comforter. He knows our pain. He knows our, our distress, our problems, our difficulties.
if you are a child of god i will tell you one thing problems difficulties and hatred death and troubles are the way of life for you because the lord jesus christ the son of god the great god he became man he underwent that travel troubles and difficulties if the lord jesus christ the very god himself had underwent that troubles and difficulties and agony in his life what about us that's why the bible says in this world jesus said in this world you have tribulation but we have good cheer i have overcome the world one who has overcome the world is with us and he will always comfort us he will always protect us he will gather us together under his wings that is his promise huh? see look at that he says verse 19 of zephaniah chapter 3 behold at that time i will undo all that afflict thee look at that what a wonderful promise is i will undo all that afflict you what a wonderful thing it is <laughs> this is beautiful and i will save her that he left and gather her that was driven out and i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame <laughs> our lord jesus christ is concerned about our honor he is concerned about our our dignity our glory see look at that hmm? i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame god says and verse 20 this is spirit at that time will i bring you again even in the time that i gather you for i will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when i turn back your captivity before you rise say the lord what a wonderful thing this is tremendous this is tremendous zephaniah when he closes his book hmm, only three chapters when he closes his book he he tells something wonderful so listen to me again i will read that at that time god says this is god, god the almighty god says at that time will i bring you again even in the time that i gather you for i will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when i turn back your captivity before your own eyes say the lord god will glorify his people and all those who see god's people they will praise the lord what a marvelous marvelous things what a wonderful bright future hmm. that god will going to do that i tell you my dear friends and the time is at hand time is at hand look at the things happening around the globe what is happening around the globe all these things signifies the coming of the lord jesus christ for the glorification of his children washed by the precious blood of jesus christ how much we should praise him how much we should worship him what a loving savior we have hmm. what a savior what a friend we have in jesus wonderful wonderful song what a friend we have in jesus 
the mighty God, the almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, has become a wonderful friend to his people. What a wonderful thing it is. What a wonderful thing. It need not call us as his servants. He did not uh, behave with us as, a, as our boss. No. In my own experience of 53 years, I can say the Lord has been good in all circumstances. Yes, troubles were there, difficulties were there, problems were there, sickness was there. In all circumstances, he was so good. He never, ever left me, even for a second. Because that was his promise. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. That was his promise. He was faithful to his promise. And he said, no, I am with you always, even to the end of the day. And he will be, he is faithful to, the, to his promise. How many promises are there? <laughs> I tell you countless. Some people said 3,900. Some people said 7,000 and odd. We cannot count the promises. That's why the Bible says in Corinthians, whatever the promises are, they are all yes in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why one chorus, is, a chorus goes like, count your blessings and name them one by one. We are forgetful people. We forget what God has done in our life. But do not forget, count your blessings and name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. Count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Do this in your life. You will forget your problems. You will forget your sickness. You will forget everything when you start counting the blessings what God has done. Forget not the blessings of God. Remember it. Count it. And praise God for it. Because worship, many people do not know what is worship. <clears throat> See, Bible is a wonderful book. Uh, even about worship, Bible talks about the worship, the pattern of worship. Hmm? There is only one pattern, that is biblical pattern, Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Four pillar pattern. On the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached, there was so many people from different language groups were gathered together. And more than 3,000 people came to the Lord that day. And then the Bible says, in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they who came to the Lord, they Worship God steadfastly. Let me read that. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is very beautiful. This is the biblical pattern of the New Testament church. No other pattern. Okay? So, only one pattern. Verse 42. And they continued steadfastly. Look at that. Listen to me very carefully. They continued steadfastly. Number one, in the apostle doctrine, that is the word of God. Word of God is number one. We should speak the word of God as it is and verbatim. Look at that. Eh? In the apostle doctrine, that is the word of God. And number two is fellowship, sharing. Fellowship is sharing. That is the second pillar. And number three, in breaking of bread. That's what the Bible says here. 
See, breaking of bread. What happened when Jesus died? Eh? The curtain which was uh, which has closed, which has closed the most holy place, holy of holies, was torn from top to bottom, so that the holy of holies is seen. And the common man now go to the holy of holies. Hmm? So uh, it it was visible in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was opened, the Holy of Holies. That means we should worship where? In the most holy place. We cannot worship God in any place. That is where the, where the Lord Jesus Christ is. Most holy place. Okay. And number four, hmm. And it, they continued steadfastly in prayers. Prayer shows that we are totally dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. We by ourselves cannot do anything. We need, uh, need to be dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. Totally. Uh, so that this is the fourfold, uh, four pillar pattern of the New Testament church. There is no other pattern. All books, liturgy and so many other things that are written by man, that is not the word of God at all. That is not the pattern at all. So God has given us the pattern for worship in the Bible. This is absolutely wonderful. And we should go according to this four pillar pattern. No other pattern. This is the Spirit of God who gave us this pattern. Man made pattern will never take us to the Lord. So, this is very, very absolutely important. When we go through this pattern wholeheartedly and worshipping God, Worship means we should worship God for what He is. And we should, we should worship God for what he, he has done for us. Twofold worship. See, that is... So, we are... You know, in one, one line I can say that we should present a grateful heart to the Lord. A grateful heart. That is the real worship. Nothing else. This is absolutely clear in the word of God. So we should worship God in the beauty of His holiness. And that worship is accepted in the presence of the Lord as a sweet smelling aroma to God. What a wonderful thing it is. How much privilege we are to worship our God like that. Let me repeat that. Presenting a grateful heart to the Lord is a great worship. How much we should worship God. How much we should adore Him. How much we should magnify Him. How much we should glorify Him. What a wonderful Savior we have in Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful Redeemer we have in Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful Provider we have in Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful God we have in Jesus. For we have to, so that we can spend our eternity in the wonderful presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God.